Natalie Gray, NW6S. She's launched her own TikTok channel called The Glam Ham. And I think, Natalie, I think I read that you have 58,000 subscribers. It's just incredible. And you've done this within three years of being licensed. So this, this is an incredible track record and an accomplishment. And we are dying to hear about it. So... I feel like I need to pull off a rubber mask. It's me, <laughs> Doug Winterham, since 1964. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, thank you, first of all, for having me. Uh, and I have to give a lot of credit to W6SD because you may not know this, but there would be no glam ham without W6SD. Because in 2020, when I got into ham radio and started to become interested in the summer of 2020 during COVID, um, I'll talk about how I got into it. I found where could I take the test? And the only place I could take the test was at through W6SD. And so this was all so new to me because of the pandemic. Most people weren't doing any testing, but W6SD was open to new members and they were doing testing. And so I wrote and I wrote to via the website and I just was like such a noob, you know, where it's like, hey, I'm interested in ham radio. And I just wondered, where can I test? And because of the pandemic. So he was like, well, you can come to the Van Nuys flyaway and take your test on the hood of your car. Well. I'm a former stand-up comedian. I'm used to winging it for many years of my life. So this was right up my street. You cannot get more low pressure and informal than show up at the parking lot on a Saturday morning. If you're in a car, you got a desk. Just we'll give you a paper and you lean on the hood of your car and take a test. And so I did. Um, and I had done a lot of studying. I followed so much of adv advice of everything I could find. You know, I did ham radio prep. I was watching videos of W4EEY on YouTube. And I was listening to the audiobooks of Michael Burnett, who's just such a fantastic author of ham radio. He does the fast track books and they're so fun to listen to. So it was during COVID because of that social isolation, I had all the time in the world, just me walking the dogs, listening to Michael Burnett and then watching YouTube and doing ham radio prep. So I'd really studied hard to do the test and, and I passed technician and I said, uh, because of the books I would listened to, the audio books, they said, if you pass your first exam, you can take the second exam right then and there. So I'm at the parking lot and, and I said, can I take uh, the general? And they're like, sure, sure. And they give me the general. And I, I think because of being a female operator, I could sense a little bit of the intrigue go up. Oh, this little lady thinks she's going to pass general. I could feel the feeling with like other people there testing. There was this sense of, we don't see this every day. Why don't we stick around and see if she passes? So I could feel this kind of curiosity of people who'd already done their exams, but they were lingering around kind of watching me do mine to see if I passed. Thank goodness I passed. Um, and so had it not been for your great ham club, and being so dedicated to the hobby that you were enabling people to take a test during COVID. I mean, you know, big hats off to all of you because that is real dedication to the hobby. So that inspired me. And then I went home and I was so invigorated from passing my technician in general. I thought I've got to do extra. I've got not much else to do. I've got a job, but I do that from home. And then there's no social life because it's the pandemic. I'll study for extra. So I studied really hard. Michael Burnett said, you want to allow two months for studying. So I did. And he said, you want to book a date for your exam, because if you book a date, you will study for it. And he's so right. So I phoned, uh, emailed, and I said, put me down for the extra exam, which I think was September 30th, 2020. So it was a couple months after I'd taken the technician in general. And I studied so hard. And 
I went to do and the exam again on the hood of the car. And I really, really wanted to get every answer right. Like I, it was like I became obsessed with studying for this exam and anything I didn't understand, which was a fair amount. Let's be honest. I had zero electronics background. So I was having to memorize like diode illustrations and stuff without truly understanding how one might actually implement this. So uh, I was working and I finished the exam and whoever was marking it put the template down. And I, I bet he's here and he'll know if it was him. He put the template down and I knew it was John. And he sat down and I, and other people are looking like, oh, this girl's taking her extra. Again, we don't see this every day. And he's marking them wrong. And he marks a couple wrong. And my heart, I start to get that feeling of my heart going up in my chest. And I was like, this can't be right. Like I studied for this. I don't mind getting one wrong. But now he was like, it was like wrong, wrong, wrong wrong, wrong. And I was really starting to feel like super embarrassed. And I finally said, really embarrassed, like, I, are you sure that it's right? Because I studied really hard. And John very honorably goes, I got the template back to front. So I'll never know if I did get them all right, but at least I passed. And that was what counts. So it was a rather a grueling emotional roller coaster doing the exam that day. But my gosh, I was so excited to get extra, uh, mainly because I became obsessed with a four letter call sign, because the more people that I would meet to do with ham radio, you know, I mean, here am I, I know almost nothing, but I'm aligning with people who know stuff. So they're, of course, telling me all this information and they're only too happy to share their advice. And they're like, well, if you want to get into CW, you're going to want ideally a short call. I'm still not into CW. I plan to be into CW, but the obsession of I'm going to need a short call so that if I get into CW, I'm already placed well with a short call. So, so the day I got my extra, I uh, applied for my four letter call sign. And for any of you who ever applied for a vanity call sign, you will know the excitement when you apply to the FCC with your little requests of the letters that you've toiled over. What are the letters going to be? And there's not many four letter calls left. And so, you know. It was kind of slim pickings and I was doing all this. I'm a writer, so I live for words. So I'm like November whiskey, six Sierra. Well, November whiskey sounds like a country song, right? That's good. November whiskey, whiskey six sounds like a band and I like music. So already this is really looking good. And Sierra sounds like this really relaxing California kind of sunset vibe. And that was it. I was locked on to that. I needed this call sign, <laughs> this exact one. And I did all this research because of being a nerd. I researched online how you apply and how do you up the odds of getting the call sign that you want. And some forum said, if you apply at midnight, at the stroke of midnight, it sounds like I'm going to like kill a chicken or something in this ritual, but no animals were harmed. They said, if you apply just before midnight, your odds of being the one who is picked go up. So I called the FCC and there's some lady working from home who's super friendly because she's at home. Her kids are in the background screaming as we all were in COVID. And I was like, is there a best time I can apply for this call sign? And she, and she said, it doesn't make a difference, but good luck to you. <laughs> so anyway, I'm watching the clock, the day. There's a website for any of you looking to update your call sign. Not that you would, but if you do, there's a website called radioqth.net and they tell you all of the call signs and the exact date they're coming available. And it's an excellent website. You can pick by your location or by some letters that you want and it will show you what's coming up. So it shows you the date your call might become available. Well, that 
night. Sure enough, at the stroke of midnight, I stayed up to apply and send the email off at midnight. And I did obviously get the call. So I'm thinking, if I'm honest with you, I think there's some truth to that, that if you do it right on the stroke of midnight, um, because it told you on the website, I think it said how many people were applying for that call. And there was definitely multiple people applying. So I did feel it was very lucky to get the call that I wanted. And I thought that must be because I did this stroke of midnight. And for any of you who haven't heard of this app, Hamsphere, it's a really good app. I'm just going to show you what, uh, it's a big number five. Oh, hang on. How do I see? I need to be able to see my camera. I've got to go back here. So it's a big yellow with a number five if you go to your app store whether it's android or iphone um so this app is an emulator of ham radio and the cool thing about it is it lets you transmit using the internet even without a ham radio license so again here we are 2020 and I'm sewing bonnets for first responders. Everybody did their part right. And the only thing I was like, well, I can sew. So I sewed PPE for, I think it was like 174 nurses, bonnets and stuff. And I was all happy sewing away. And I found this app and they give you a, three, a free 30 day trial. And I'll, I'll show you what it looks like. And it, I'll tell you what I fell in love with. So straight away you hear, I don't know if you hear that, the white noise. Does that come through the Zoom for you guys? Let me turn up. How's that? Okay. It's probably, it's very loud, but it's probably because Zoom thinks that that's just noise that it should block out. But you all know what white noise sounds like. It's just that shh, Quinn, in case uh, you're not sure. Well, Everybody was very anxious in, in the pandemic, especially at this time. And I found it really soothing listening to this white noise, just going shh. And then I started to figure out how you could hear people talk, which on the new app, you just press this arrow here and it cycles you through windows. They have a waterfall, which is like, obviously, this thing that looks like a blue ocean on here is like a waterfall and you see where people transmit. I've got a big radio down here and I have it with two waterfalls right now so I can monitor different frequencies and you can see when people transmit. Well, there's a waterfall um, in here and I started to see people transmitting, but I started to hear people talking to each other during the pandemic from all over the world. Now, this is very cool for many reasons because A, I didn't have a license when I discovered this. So even to be able to listen to ham radio operators with a free app, I didn't have HF rigs. I didn't even have my trusty Baofeng yet. So I had this app and here I am listening to ham radio operators around the world. And what really struck me really early on oh here can you hear that i mean how cool there's hams calling cq on an app and you can sign up and they will issue you this uh call sign that's not a ham call sign it's only for use within the app but I'm hearing people who have ham radio call signs. So I'm starting to hear the lingo. Oh, what's your QTH? Oh, QSL 73. And I'm looking it up on the internet. What do these terms mean? So it tuned my ear to ham radio. But the conversations was what made me fall in love with the hobby. There were people, for example, in Australia talking to people in India. And remember, it's 2020. We're all under lockdown. We've got the shelter in place orders. And here I am in L.A. listening to a guy in Australia and he's like, well, we can't go to the end of our driveway here, but uh, my wife's cooking the potatoes and I'll, I'll be going soon, my friend. And he, everybody was like, my friend, my friend. But they were strangers. But there seemed to be this transcendence in ham radio of instant camaraderie and friendship. 
with complete strangers. And I really liked that. And then he was talking to someone in India. I won't do that dialect. Uh, but he's saying, you know, we we can't leave where we are. Uh, and they're all these countries. And we're all in the same boat. In my whole life, I had never experienced a situation where the whole world was in the same boat. Except we've seen it one time since when Will Smith punched Chris Rock at the Oscars. This is the only other time the world has been on the same page going, what is going on? So it really made an impact uh, on me. And I knew I want to be one of these people who gets to talk and say, thank you, my friend, 7-3. <laughs> That's really what it was about. I wanted to talk to people in other places, learn the lingo and just chit chat. It was like super simple and straightforward. So many people write to me and they'll say like, oh, are you building your own kits and blah, blah, blah. I've bought them, but I haven't built them yet because the bottom line is my interest is purely in the actual communication with people. I like to hear people's voices. I love dialects. So I've got in, I got this beautiful radio, the ICOM ID52 and uh, I have the Anytone as well uh, from Bridgecom Systems. So I've got DMR and DSTAR. And it is so easy to talk to people around the world on those radios. And yes, obviously, it's using the internet with RF. So it's not your mode you're going to want to have for those SHTF situations. But for People who might not have room for an HF rig or the finances for an HF rig, doing these digital protocols is really incredible fun and incredibly rewarding um, and educational to easily talk to people all over the world with a radio in the palm of your hand. So I, I'm pretty blown away with those modes. And my gear I have, the first radio I got was uh, a Valfung. Uh, everybody got the UV5R, as did I. And then I found out that the better one came out, the GT5R. Uh, that is the one if you can scrounge up $26. Uh, the GT5R is, is a starter radio, I recommend, because it's inexpensive. And I would not want anybody to spend money until they know they like the hobby. Then when you like the hobby, <laughs> let the fun begin. <laughs> only when you like the hobby though and i mean then it's like there really is no end in sight for the purchasing power of a ham operator so um yeah and i'm just gonna uh, open up the chat i can see uh, i do encourage the questions with chat and the reason is that is because when i do my tiktoks People can't talk to me on TikTok, but they can write questions. And so I like to know I'm answering what people want. The question is, who in your life inspired you to be a ham? So no one, I didn't know any ham operators. It was really strange. I think it was just something to do with it being the pandemic and everybody panicking. And no, remember what it felt like in that early part of 2020 when nobody really knew what was going to happen and you didn't know if stuff was going to happen with communications, were we going to run out of food, were the trucks going to stop? I mean, it was so uncertain and communications started to cross a lot of people's mind. And I know that because the signups at Ham Radio Prep went up 700% at the beginning of the pandemic. So ham, thanks to COVID, ham has had an enormous resurgence, a very big resurgence. Um, by the way, anyone looking to upgrade their license and go to ham radio prep, you do save 20% off with coupon code GLAM. <laughs> so uh, I highly recommend them. Let's look at the next question. Listen to DMR stations from around the world. Absolutely. I do that too. And you can log those as well, as I'm sure you know. So my logbook, uh, it probably doesn't show up well here. It's on night mode, but I have just qrz.com. It's free. It's easy. That's what I use. I have not yet got into the logbook of the world stuff. I got my secret little document 
where it makes you feel like you're in a super secret club that may be illegal and they send you this little thing that's like some little, it feels like you're putting a piece of malware on your computer, but then it talks to Logbook of the World. It, it's like a little beyond my scope for logging someone's call sign, if I'm honest. So uh, qrz.com, I just find nice and easy. So my dad- And with that, and with that DMR- you can listen to it, the hose line, as it's called, without yes. a license. Yes, yes, yes. Great point, Bernard. If you go to hose.brandmeister.net, um, anybody in the world can listen. I'll bring it up. And I can tell you a, a trick to make sure if you listen on your phone, hose.brandmeister.network it is. If you listen on your phone, you have to make sure your phone's off silent or else it doesn't work. That's what it looks like, hose.brandmeister.net. Anybody can just go to that website on your phone or on um, a desktop and you see all the little flags. And this really appeals to me, all of this international stuff. Really. Upper left corner, you can go in the daylight mode. Oh, nice. See if that shows up better for you. I like night mode myself, but maybe that shows up better for you with the flags and stuff. It's just nice. Click and you just touch and boom, you're listening to people in countries all over the world. And for anyone who's in New Ham, just looking to tune their ear to some of the lingo, I think these there's so many things around that are fantastic to really get people up and running very quickly. You know, um, let's go back. So also we- Broadcastify has many repeaters from around the world. Cool. Very cool. Thank you, Bernard. So Rick says my dad had a 1964 ARRL handbook, which I tried to memorize. (laughs) It didn't quite happen, but led to a life in tech. Oh, well, that's an amazing story. Yeah, that would have been quite the feat to memorize that. I have, I think, the uh, 1922, the 2022 one. Do I have it right here? Yes, I do. Hold on. Ta-da! Here's my one. It's a good book, but I found if I'm truthful myself, I work better with audio books and I found the Michael Burnett audio books were very, very helpful, mostly whether it's I'm too hyper to sit and read a book, whereas I can be walking and exercising and stuff with an audio book. But I like those. Don't forget to mention your discount. Oh, thank you, Michael. (laughs) <laughs> Thank you, Michael. I think Michael used my discount code to upgrade. Yes, the discount code for Ham Radio Prep is GLAM. And uh, I just really, rec- the reason I recommend it is because I use them for my tech and my general, and I pass them on the same day. And I really credit the studying presentation of Ham Radio Prep because they highlight in blue the right answers. So as you're studying all of those 400 questions, it really helps those little psychological uh, memorizer things like having the answers in blue and they have little animations and cartoons, which dilutes a lot of the anxiety that people like me might feel when they're studying something highly technical, when my background is not highly technical, you know. So um, do you post your videos on YouTube as well as TikTok? I actually do. But to give you an idea, right now on TikTok, I have 425 ham radio videos. And on YouTube, I probably only have about 40 ham radio videos because I only started putting them up recently. So I'm trying to do more of that on YouTube, but TikTok sort of... uh, I just find myself on TikTok and it's it's easy. It's very easy to just stick a post up on TikTok. They make it very easy for you. Um, how did I become aware of it? Like if I'm truthful, I can't even remember the very first thing that made me think of ham radio. I can tell you one bizarre thing though. And many of you may have ever had a health scare that was so scary. Maybe you had a fall or a car accident or something terrible. But I had something very undramatic happen in 2012, February. My blood pressure crashed. But it became very dramatic because I had a near-death experience. It crashed really low and I went icy cold, very funny color. And 
I had been told by two doctors at the time, you have to be really careful with your blood pressure. Like don't stand up quickly and you have to be really careful. Eat three teaspoons of salt a day. Who wants to do that, right? So sure enough, for whatever reason, my blood pressure was low and I had this near death experience and I had no scientific background. I was Miss Artsy Girl. I did painting. I did stand up comedy. I did all the, the creative sort of things. And I started to speak scientific information. And thank God I had two witnesses with me, because if I hadn't, I honestly don't think anyone would have believed me. Um, And the first thing that I said was, everything is an illusion. It is all our perception of an infinite range of frequencies and vibrations. And I went on for 45 minutes speaking about scientific insights, which I had zero prior knowledge of. Afterwards, I remembered everything. I wrote a 20,000 word document to make sure I remembered everything. And I started to research what I had spoken on a scientific tangent. I was looking up physicists and, you know, sound scientists. And I started a a podcast and I interviewed scientists and comedians. (laughs) around the world. So it's uh, quite a diverse podcast called The Grey Escape. And what I learned was that everything I said in the near-death experience had been true. And that started a very big fascination with uh, frequencies. So that in itself lent me to radios and ham radio. But if you ask what's the actual little needle that twinged to ham radio. I honestly can't remember what it was. I think it was more just the pandemic and the fear of what would we do if we couldn't talk on cell phones? You know, these things we all took so much for granted in the pandemic, before the pandemic, like toilet paper stocks. And suddenly these things we take for granted are just nowhere to be found. And you can't quite believe it, you know. Uh, so Kilo Six Zulu Golf Whiskey says, if you want to use CW to talk to people around the world anytime, Google V band, no RF involved. Oh, just the internet. That is a uh, very interesting. Is that I have a little gadget? I wonder if V band. I think it's the same people. Uh, they make a little USB Morse code key that you can practice with. And I think V-Band might be those same people. And you can also practice on your own. Um, But thank you for that, uh, Barry. Uh, So my YouTube channel is just the same as my TikTok. It's just called Glam Ham Radio. Um, Ham Radio dot solution, CW hotline. There is a lot of support for CW, I noticed. There's like CW Ninja. I did join the Long Island CW club. But I I got a lifetime membership, and I think the enormous downside of getting a lifetime membership is I constantly procrastinate. Well, I'll do it another time. It's a lifetime membership. There's like nothing. Make if I only had a thirty day membership, I'd probably know CW by now. You know, there's really good apps, by the way. I have loads of Morse code apps that are excellent and that have actually helped me learn uh, the the alphabet for starters. If I bring up the word Morse, Morse it is my favorite. But there's four Morse code apps right there that I have. And uh, if uh, if Quinn is at all interested uh, for young people who like texting, Morse Mania is very good because it basically has you texting in the same way that you would. Um, it's very gamified with levels and sound effects and stuff. And that's a really fun way to learn Morse code. What was your motivation to do videos about ham radio and especially on TikTok? Um, Great question. Uh, Thank you for that, Richard. So my partner is a TikToker and he actually has uh, like 1.2 million followers, but he works in entertainment, uh, not tech. (laughs) So he kept telling me, you you should go on TikTok with your comedy and with your songwriting because I like I'm a writer, but I also write songs. And I have a problem that maybe you can relate to called perfectionism, where you feel that you can't put something out there unless it's perfect. And it's quite the blight. So I was really struggling to put my music online because it never felt good enough. It never felt perfect enough. But I thought, wow, I really like ham radio. 
And there's really a low bar for putting videos up online, right? Like you get people just going like literally, hey, this is my radio. Uh, this is what it looks like. Let's turn it around. This is it. Okay. So that for me, I was I was watching videos like that. So I thought, well, I could do that. This does not seem terribly intimidating. And uh, December 21st, 2021, uh, I think was the very first one I put up um, by my like I think about the fifth or sixth video or something, I'd had a viral one that showed me that um, people were interested in ham radio. Um, How many ham radios do you have? Oh, what a good question. Okay, let's see uh, who here can, <laughs> many of you I think probably can top me. So just on handheld ham radios, I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight nine and then two in the, i've uh 10 11 handhelds can as any but probably people have more than that here and then with the we call these uh quinn hf radios which is high frequency and what that basically means is this is how you talk farther away so the way i explain it to people new in the hobby or getting in the hobby is the handheld radios is your local kind of city communication so somebody like you would probably want to talk to local people and then maybe when you uh want to start to talk to people farther away you get a radio like this called an hf radio these are actually quite inexpensive. I've noticed now on eBay, they were a lot more expensive when they first came out. This is the ICOM 705 and it really does just about everything. Um, and that will get all the different channels you could. I've talked just a few weeks ago, I was on my TikTok and I talked to Russia, Japan and Brazil uh, on my HF radio. So um, I've got one, two, three HF radios. I've got two two meter radios the local sort of uhf vhf but mostly I, I got lots of handheld radios do you have any serious low band antennas now i'm not dyslexic but i do have a weird bl brain glitch that sometimes i do get i've never been diagnosed as dys dyslexic but sometimes the low and the high does get me confused because it's like it's the low band high frequencies something math is that have i said it right if it's a low band it's a high frequency and then the other way around if it's a high band it's a low frequency so that it always twists my brain up a bit so my antennas that i've got that might be what you're talking about would be the hoa buster from alpha antenna and that is a really impressive impressive antenna. It was $250 from alphaantenna.com and you can clip it to your drain pipe. So nobody knows that you've got, that's why it's called the HOA buster. But that works very, very well. Um, the other antenna actually that has been really successful for me is another alpha antenna one called the hex antenna. And I have that a dipole configuration that was about 400 bucks lying on my rooftop. So my, my neighbors don't even know that I have a giant, like 30 odd feet antenna on my roof because it's just lying down and it works great. It's not even installed properly. It's supposed to be up on a tripod. But when we had Hurricane Hillary, I climbed on my roof and lay it down flat. And uh, I've been making great contacts on that. So definitely the two websites for antennas. I mean, I definitely recommend looking at chameleonantenna.com. I have a mag loop from them and then uh, the alphaantenna.com. So uh, let's have a look. Where is my accent from? Yes, uh, John, my accent is from Birmingham, UK, originally, right in the middle, in the Midlands. In England, my accent sort of what you'd call a middle class dialect. Because I do voiceover, I can talk on a low class, uh, you know, see what I mean. If I wanted to change it up, I'd be in and out. You know what I mean? You can just and then that would be more lower class. And then a more refined dialect might be something like this. And I would speak to you a lot more slowly about ham radio and probably sound a lot better than my own natural voice. <laughs> so that's a more upper class accent there. There's a, a free sample of voiceover work there. 
um hf antennas 20 meters yes 20 meters that's the band on hf that i most go on uh many of you if you can see that number 14.300 is the maritime mobile net and i really like that net because it just happens to be on a lot <laughs> when i'm doing a tiktok so i can make a contact and uh for anyone who hasn't checked into that net they of course prioritize the marine mobile any any boating people or seafaring people who might have any issues for their safety they let those people check in and then they get to a point now where they go and now we'll take any check-ins and my little comedy brain always makes uh makes it amusing to me because it to me it sounds like we'll take anybody any, anybody, any check-ins, you know, and then I know I'm safe to check in then, you know. So um, so I think as far as actual gear, I've got um, the 705 was my second HF rig I bought. The first was the 7300, which I have just over here. And um, then the most recent big acquisition was the ICOM 7610. And the reason I got that was because it has a DVI output, which for TikTok is great. So people can see on a bigger monitor what I'm looking at. And that uh, that's a nice feature to have when you're making TikToks and stuff, make it nice and visual. Um, Alex says, do you do any Pota Parks on the air or SOTA Summits on the air? So, yes, I did do Summits on the air and I've done some videos about it. Um, my job as a writer is very sedentary and I'm trying to look for opportunities to get more exercise. I'm also kind of lazy when it comes to exercise. So the way that I could make it fun was getting one of my handheld radios and going on a hike up high. And I did find that tremendously exciting. Uh, and I even on a, you know, simplex contact, I got 60 miles away uh, on a SOTA, which was really, really, I was thrilled to bits with that. But um, it's hard for me because I'm not very fit and athletic, but it's the big, amazing lure of doing a summit on the air is you get those stunning views when you get to the top and I'm in LA and and the views are just so beautiful so yes I have not done parks on the air but I have done summits on the air and a very good app for summit anyone looking to do summits on the air is um Sota Goat I like a lot the Sota Goat app is very good um so Mike says, what led to your focus on ICOM? So a very good question. I actually did buy Yesu over here. And I think I got this possibly before I got my HF one. Yeah. But I didn't bond to this. And the reason is it was broken right out the gates. Got it from Ham Radio Outlet. And I was all psyched because it had a scope. And it didn't work properly. The touchscreen didn't work. And it was really frustrating. Again, in COVID, Ham Radio Outlet were fantastic. They took care of everything. But I still had to drive down. And I don't live close to Anaheim. Take it back. They sent it back to Yesu. It was gone like two months. So it wasn't a very good experience Uh in the meantime, I was falling in love with like this radio and the, uh, oh, actually the ICOM 7300 because so many YouTube videos feature the ICOM 7300 and I'm a glutton for color and visual stuff. And I just loved the scope on the ICOM 7300. And I, I get pretty fascinated with things where my heart gets involved and I, I start to long for things. And I was like longing for this ICOM 7300. And I think it was like December, 2020, I got the ICOM 7300 and um, I think not long after they were, they were coming out with this one, this baby one. And then I really fell in love with that. And the, the ad for the ICOM 705 had this girl with a backpack and the radio was in the backpack and backpack. I mean, come on, now we're accessorizing a ham radio with a backpack. So I, then I would, that was the new longing was the ICOM 705, but it is a stellar radio. I mean, 
Credit where credit's due. This is a, a great radio. I've taken this to Canada. I took it with my HOA buster, strapped it to uh, a relative's drain pipe, the HOA buster, and I'm listening to Italy off their drain pipe. It was fantastic, you know. So, um, do you want to talk about Aries? Uh, sure. So, Aries, amateur radio emergency service. I heard about Aries early on because one of the things, see, many of you are already Elmers. You already have done ham radio for a long time. I don't know if we have newer hams in here. Um, but if we if we do, you new hams know that you need people who are the Elmers to teach you because it's so daunting. So as I was slowly speaking to people and I had an interest in emergency communications, especially after doing the bonnets and the nurses stuff, I found it very rewarding. And I thought, well, it'd be kind of nice to be able to help people if there was an emergency. And the name Aries kept coming up and finally I found the contact, you know, Ruzi, W1EH, who's incredible. And I wrote to Ruzi, uh, who I didn't know at all then. And everybody was so welcoming. He's like, come on down, blah, blah, blah. And we're all in the park because it's COVID. Again, we're still out in outdoors, social distancing. And everybody was welcoming. Wherever I went to do with ham, people were welcoming. There was just like this instant camaraderie. And it, to be honest, there's a weird um, comparison, but I was a stand-up comedian for many years. And wherever you go in the world as a comedian, if you go into a comedy club, you can walk into a green room. And if there's comics there, there's just this feeling of like, hey, you already just know people. Hey, where you've been performing? And there was there's this global camaraderie and I felt that that is what there is in ham radio that wherever you go in the world there's just this instant oh you're ham cool what's your call oh nice what's your rig you know it's like boom boom and that's that's a beautiful thing anything that's uniting people is a beautiful thing you know so uh, I was going to a lot of Aries things and I've learned a tremendous amount the last few months, I had some pretty serious stuff going on. And I actually, it took me out of the country a little bit and then had my surgeries. I still can't drive yet. So I have not been able to go for a little while, but it is absolutely something that I want to get back into now, basically, as soon as I'm drivable again. So I highly recommend Aries. And literally anyone interested in joining Aries Northwest, you can email W1EH. I'm pretty sure his email is literally W1EH at ARRL.net. And they're very welcoming. They're always looking for new members, you know. Uh, Rick says, is the act of communicating what you what most appealed to you? Do you think that's what appeals to youth? That's such a good question. It appeals to me the communication, but but the tech appears appeals to me as well. I'm a gadget person. I have lots of musical gadgets like drum machines and beat pad machines. Um, I've got lots and lots of things that make musical sounds. And ham radio to me, they're like the apple of the ham radio world, these ICOM radios. This is like what the iPod was when it came out, where it's like, oh my gosh, that's how I feel about my ICOM 705. It's just a stunning piece of tech. So it's both communicating with people, the tech, but the third thing, and I think this is where the youth thing comes in, is that sense of security. Young people are, are really savvy uh, into the prep side of things and the prep market. Um, they want to, I think a lot of young people don't have a lot of faith in where society's going. So there's a huge swaths of the internet and social media dedicated to prepping. And what if, what if the cell phones go down? What if the government shuts off your cell phone kind of thing? And uh, I don't know if that if it's a valid fear or not, but I certainly feel secure knowing that at least I've got ham radio in case something happened. So I think what appeals to youth is that sense of empowerment that I don't have to rely on a corporate body. What if AT&T just has a hack and their cell towers go down and everyone who's an AT&T subscriber lose their uh, phone privileges, you know, 
none of this is out of the question. And Ruzi, who heads up our Aries division, he says that the cell phone providers, what they don't tell you is they only cater to 15% of their subscriber base. So when there is an emergency and you have 95% of people using their phone, the phones are jammed. So your cell phone becomes useless. And that's even if the cell towers haven't been compromised by a natural or man-made issue. So um, I think everyone in this Zoom knows the the comfort of knowing you've got a ham radio and an antenna and you know how to at least contact someone, you know, that is a powerful thing. Uh, Bob says, am I still performing? I haven't done comedy for a really long time. I'm, I'm in the game. I was writing for Warner brothers, which was Hogwarts legacy. Um, the origins of all my hand was, but uh, it's a fabulous game. It's, it's broken a lot of records this year. But I'm 10 people in Hogwarts Legacy. So technically, I am I was performing in that, playing characters like the fat lady, like password and this sort of thing. Um, I've done some open mic musical stuff with my songs that I write. But uh, I was thinking, actually, you'll be the you heard it first here at W6SD monthly meeting. I'm thinking of doing some comedy sketches on TikTok for my ham radio channel about ham radio um, as just an experiment because I love writing comedy. I wrote tons of comedy stuff for Hogwarts Legacy and just silly stuff like trying to order things from Bed Bath and & Beyond. And I want a Tango, Oscar, Whiskey, Echo, Lima. No, a Tango, Oscar, Whiskey, Echo, Lima. <laughs> just really silly stuff, you know, and make a TikTok video out of it. Uh, let's see. Younger hams may be attracted more to digital modes than voice, at least on HF. Software control of radio. Uh, Randy, that is a great point. I think young people love FT8. It is a fast, you get that dopamine hit of a contact pretty quickly. And you can also leave it unattended, making contacts for you. So I think you're absolutely right there. Uh let me see. I have no idea what the time is. Let me have a look. Oh, it's 8.30. Okay. So so I should probably pass it back to you guys again. Thank you for inviting me into your, clearly what is an underground secret society. And uh, now I'm on to you. <laughs>